Um, we got some news. Okay, first, we saw Hereditary last night. Mm-hmm. Were we talking spoilers for Hereditary? Yes. So if you haven't seen it, come back in like five minutes. Yes, we are going to do some spoilers. Uh, we're going to talk some spoilers. Thumbnails. We're going to talk um, some ending explanation stuff because... Um, I had more time to look at some other videos and look at more things about it, and I wasn't wrong, which was crazy, because most of the time I'm way off. Um, But yeah, for those of you who have seen Hereditary, stick around. Uh, For those of you who haven't, we're going to be doing... uh, If you have seen it, just like comment down your thoughts below. I know, I assume a lot of you guys haven't seen it, just because my fan base, I don't think... A lot of you would have. Like, Not as much as a horror yeah. fans. Yeah. No, fair enough. Um, but yeah, so Hereditary. I The more I'm thinking about it, the more I really, really like it just as a movie. I think it's a really good movie. Um, it was it was straightforward, and yet... A lot of foreshadowing. A lot, yeah, and that's the thing. Like It held your hand, and you kind of were going in a way that you were going, um, but you ended up getting to where you needed to be, which obviously was the ending, uh, and... Yet, there were so many other things that just, because of the foreshadowing, it added to the relatively linear story. See, like, some of these scenes, though, when it when the scenes played out, it just hit you like a pull in the face. Yeah. Yeah, there was some... Uh, just because the kid died. It had that get-out thing where it was like, it was it definitely was a psychological thing. Obviously, it dealt with demonic Then it turned into religion, which I didn't like. But no, the whole thing was about it. I think towards the end, though, oh, yeah. it turned into the horror aspect. It was at the a religious end. movie, but you just didn't see it. Well, it, and it depends like... what kind of religion, because this was a um, the the god Payman was the one. It was and it's a god of mischief for what they're believing Loki. in. Kind of, yeah. It's like a Loki esque. Loki, Loki. And um, it was just it, just the way they constructed the story, and what I really liked about it, and this is what I thought, and I watched about five or six other YouTube channels uh, talking about Hereditary, and they kind of proved that point for me because. I said it kept looking like we were looking at a play. Like we were looking, the opening shot, which I thought was beautiful, was it looking into the miniature house and then going into Peter's room. Actually, that shot was, re- oh my God. Was the crazy. shots in the movie were so good. But I mean, that uh, that automatically put us in the position of how we're experiencing this movie. We're experiencing it from the outside. We, we are not going to get connected with these characters really because we're going to be much like the demon god Payman, just observing from a far away. And that's how I felt. I, I constantly felt we're just looking at miniatures working their ways around. I thought that was just brilliant. It was a good movie. I didn't like the ending just because I thought, like, I don't know. I it just I was confused, I guess. I don't okay. think it was a bad ending. I just think I was confused. That's and, fair. I didn't like being confused. Um, I wasn't confused. And, I, and one guy that we ran into outside that both told us about the Charlie death. And he said he wasn't a big fan of the ending, even the second time. I enjoyed the ending because of all the, like I said, all the stuff that they left in uh, in the beginning. Uh, all the stuff that they peppered in, uh, the, the the drawings that Charlie was doing. There was that one with the Headless King. It had the crown. I think that was one I, you mentioned yes. to me. The writings on the wall. The uh, story that the mom was talking about, uh, about her brother and her son, which I, I that I got confirmed on YouTube, was... Because the mom was trying to conduct these rituals on the father and son, she succeeded in the father, but he starved himself to death to get rid of it. And then the son was going through it as well. And that's why he killed. And then he killed himself. I said that. I yeah. called that not the father, the son. You ca- yeah. Uh, I think you called it on the way home. Yeah. Um. So that was that was crazy. And then the fact that they, she never let the grandmother, the mom, or the queen. She was just, ultimately they had her as the queen. Um. Do you do have anything to do with the first child, but obviously with Charlie, who she they had said that she wanted to be a boy, and that's why her mat when the mom was going through the boxes towards the end, it said Charles, didn't said didn't say Charlie on it. See, I thought was that the kid's name? I thought that was like her brother's name. Like I was no, no, no. watching. Okay, no. Charlie was the Charlie was the girl's name. His the the daughter's name. I thought they named the daughter after his her brother, but no, that's my. Bad. No, 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 Charlie, and then Peter obviously was the other son. He was the other vessel. The dad, I kind of feel bad with because he was both not not inconsequential, but like he got he got, he got fired. He got owned big time, and he was always on the side of the sun. I found that I kind of found him frustrating because he was always on the side of the sun uh, while the mom was freaking out, and she's so worried about adopting what her lineage had, like uh, DID, which is pretty much like multiple personality disorder. But to that point, I it looking at this movie, it wasn't that. It was the possessions that, you know, caused them to have the different personalities. I was going to say, like, I felt like watching the movie, 
I thought the mom had like two personalities. Cause she like at dinner especially, she just snapped. You know what? Was, I love that. And and uh, it was uh, uh, Colette. the dream, the nightmare scene. That was great too. I, I thought ever that actress. I've seen her in a couple things, and has usually been bad. Like she was in the last Triple X movie. It wasn't very good. This movie for her speech in the uh, at the table. I would give her a nomination just for that. That was amazing. And the way that she like talked to that kid. The other thing too, um, which was pointed out in one of the other videos, the light outside the house. Remember when I was talking about how we were always feel like we're in the miniature because all the miniatures yeah. lights were always on. The sensor light outside was always on. And I was talking to the one guy, Brett, who we did a deep dive on horror. So if you want to go back into our audio stuff, we did a deep dive of horror. Links in the below for you two people and for you listening. You know, just look for yeah, deep dive horror. Yeah. Um, he was saying, it's like, we never we never saw Joan at the funeral, and we don't know how she knew she was going to those meetings. But because that light was going on, because we always saw light outside, well, clearly people were always watching the house. And so that's how she was able to do it, is knowing exactly where she was. She showed up when she needed to that second time she went to the meeting. I think it was a month or so, a couple months after her first meeting. So, yeah, it's crazy. crazy also. Crazy. Final thoughts? Uh. Yeah, just some scenes I really liked. Mm-hmm. The Batman warehouse scene. Yeah, see, that's why it didn't scare me. In the background. Like, she was totally like, yeah. You said that, and it didn't click until you said it. Apparently, the actor for Peter wanted to actually, uh, like, slam his, break his nose on the desk. Legitimately break yeah, his nose? legitimately, but the director said, no, I'm going to give you a nice, comfy, like, no, sorry, a nice, comfy, uh, you know, table, uh, to desk uh-huh. to do it. So it's, like, push it, cushioned. So he went in, you know, expecting to slam his head and be cushioned. Full bore. It was an actual desk. He broke his nose. Oh, there. boy. Yeah. But also, I love that scene where he was driving him home, and then mm. the, the wife or the mom comes running up just like Joan did. Oh. Just a parallel like that. Um, yeah. And the other thing I really liked was that Peter was so crippled with what was going to happen, and you can tell, like, they were such a distant family. They were not close at all. So when what happened to Charlie happened to Charlie... Um, the father didn't care. The f- No, not the father didn't care. The son could not go to his parents and say this happened. He had to wait for his mom to run outside the car, listen to the car. Uh, I, I saw this on Screen Junkies, and they mentioned it. I'm like, that is a great point. How disconnected they were that he couldn't tell his mom what actually happened. And uh, that she had to run out, and he just stayed in bed listening to his mom scream and then just standing in the doorway, um, which was crazy. And all leading up to eventually Peter becoming um, Charlie. The, the, well, yeah, the, the, the demon. Because Charlie had payment in her the entire time.